live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Oh, hello. Welcome yet again to a beautiful July day uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's the 30th of July, which, uh, which means that tomorrow is my sister's birthday and she joins us right now. Sos. Is it really? Happy birthday! Thank you. I am I am so not paying attention. Well, it is. I mean, your birthday's tomorrow. Oh, okay. You know, I never, I, it, 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 they never bothered me, but I don't, I'm not enjoying the hell out of this decade. You're not? I, these, no, these numbers are, like, ceasing to be just numbers. Okay. So they're, what are they? I don't know. They just sort of... Oh, how can this be true sort of numbers? I know. It must be rough when you were always the baby of the family to find yourself, you know, in your dotage. Well, and I'm at the point that I can't pretend like I don't look my age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lots of people do. I know. But you're not. You're doing it the old-fashioned way. You're... I'm doing it the old-fashioned, unretouched, unbotoxed. Me too. Um, you know what you undyed. <laughs> well, I'm. You know, what, I, I'm. What I'm, you see is, is what, is what, what you it get. is. Only creams, potions, and exercise are, right, are, are right, my only right. allowed interventions. I know. It's. I think it's the right way to go myself, because ultimately you're only kidding yourself. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> I'm. Because I'm facing what's happening. <clears throat> Yeah, and and the thing is, is to buy into the thing that as we age, we somehow are no longer beautiful or attractive or whatever. Uh, You know, I want to say that I don't think that that is true. It is our culture that has told us Right, right. I mean, why aren't women allowed to to, to to show with pride the lines of character that they've achieved? Exactly right. Exactly right. I I make it a point and have for maybe about 20 years when I started to get a sense of what happens as women age and how the culture perceives you and changes the way it reacts to you and I, just this odd stuff. And I started going out of my way only when I truly meant it, when I would, for some reason, encounter an older woman who I thought was beautiful, I would make a point of telling her, <laughs> you are beautiful. And my God, the woman at the state store, there's a woman at the state store on Murray Avenue who's got to be in her, I don't know, 70s, I think. She's gorgeous. And she hasn't had any work done. Right. You know, so the salesperson, the waitress, the this, the that, you can make, because older women are not told that. Even older women who truly are still beauties. They're not yeah, told well, that. Yeah, well, some of them get told that. I think our mother gets told it too quite much. regularly. Yeah, too much. Yeah, too much. <laughs> and she's still doing the woman thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, no. But all her life, yeah, to be told that. Oh, no. When, what do you think? The bubble over her head is really, ah, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, still, still rocking it at 91. Ha, uh-huh. ha. 
I don't know. All right. Well, Suze, it's just a number. It is just a number. I know it's just a number. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they but say. But I'm just saying 33 is a nicer number. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways. In some ways, right. No, but when I was 33, I was still back at the part where I was going, in five more years, life will be easier. Right. I mean, if you think about so it. So I spent all of those early glorious years wishing them to get away older. Right. for right. a time when I felt less anxious. And it took right. me until I was about mid-40s to just understand that I was anxious. <laughs> and that wasn't going away. <laughs> that wasn't going away. And I'd all of a sudden, I'd missed like 45 years. <laughs> Oh well. Well, you know the idea is cautionary tales, but this is what we. This is what's called, you know. This is the plus side of being in your sixties, which is with it comes a little wisdom. Well, it's it, just too effing late. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's okay. It must be the very sort of natural progression. It, it is. Oh, in, I think. I think it's the. I think it, it is not some kind. It is. The natural progression. Right. And so you get less, you, you, your priorities get more realistic and reasonable, and you don't sweat the small stuff as much, and you're less anxious, actually, because you don't get anxious about stupid things. Well, um, about Xanax. <laughs> yes, and, and that, and the Xanax prescription that you scored. And Well, you know, just knowing that there is such a thing is relieving. <laughs> you don't actually have to use it. Well... I don't know. I I like being old. I think. Yeah. I, well, there are certainly parts of it that, that that I do like. I like it. I find it. Um, I think I was meant to be old. I think, because I wasn't exactly good at being young, so I think I'm hitting my stride in my um, old age. I don't know. What the hell? Well, we aren't old. We, they, I even read today that there's a word for us. What is that? It's, oh, what did they call it? Pre, um, the, we're, something like pre-elder. <laughs> and that's like up to like, that's when you're like 59 to 65. Oh, thanks for including me. <laughs> you got one year and then you're an elder. That's okay. <laughs> I'd like to be an elder. I would. I would. Like being a deacon. Yeah. You know, I, I have a friend. My friend Kit was, is, I don't know, is, was, I don't know what the tense is. Well, certainly was. I don't know if she still is. An elder in her church. Um, oh, Susan, Laura says, happy birthday. And she says. <laughs> Thank you. And you sh- you're sharing it with Laura's eight mother, who's 84, and her, and, um, her baby sister, who's 74. Well, I good company, I'm sure, and something to aspire to in both cases. Exactly right. All right, enough of this. Okay, I'm a spring chicken. I know it. So, Susan, somewhere, I'm downtown in Pittsburgh, somewhere very near here, maybe still sleeping it off, are young men, young men, who shortly will rouse themselves and be taken over to the baseball park. I'm thinking of your cardinals are asleep right now some in some hotel, right, that I can probably see from here. Oh, if they're asleep, shame on them. They need to get up and get there, you know, in gear. No, no, you know what? I told you, we're going we're gonna to be battling it out, and I'm not, I, there's a very good chance that you're going to be in first place about halfway through this. No, we're all getting nervous. We're all getting nervous. But our, uh, the sports writer said um, in the local paper today something about how the Pi- Pittsburgh Pirates have not played, I think the term he used was a consequential series of games um, since 1992 because they haven't been in the running since 1992. Yep. It's 21 years. <laughs> and he was saying, this is a consequential series and we're so not used to it. And then he pointed out that the St. Louis Cardinals are extremely used to consequential series well, and games. And they that this are, is just well, a, you know, but that's just, they are as a tradition, 
But as this team, this is a fairly young team, and Matheny is a, you know, what, a second-year coach. Yeah, I know, that's true. But you're, so this, you're I mean, gonna... you know, you can say that the, that the franchise is that the management's used to it, yeah. but these players, no. This, right. This, they're doing that's just true. what you guys are doing. Right. And but... right now, you guys are doing it better than we are. No, Your we... pitching is better. No, just last night. Um, here's what I was thinking as I watched uh, last night. Uh oh, that's what I was thinking. Uh-oh. Oh, you think we're just being the snake in the grass? No, no, no. I think that you know it's one thing to beat you; it's another thing to pummel you, as as happened last night. I was thinking, first of all, for the Pirates, hey, save a little bit of that, <laughs> will you? Save a little bit of that. I mean, they I, they're not known for hitting, so. Save well, some so of imagine, that. so we were, we were, you know, like throwing them uh, batting practice. I know, I know, I know. So the the the, the, the problem is, yeah, we pitching is our thing, but um, I'm going to the doubleheader today. Well, as our as Bethany said in our uh, paper this morning, you're going to have times like this through the seasons. Cardinal manager Mike Messini said, you've got to keep your head down and keep going. That's right. I've given a lot of credit to opposing pitching lately, and frankly, I'm just tired of doing that. <laughs> so let me tell you, so here's my fear, is that, of course, the Cardinals, being still the best team in baseball, um, are they got ahead of steam today? They are good. I think I have a ticket to watch. You You're know. gonna watch some very fun baseball. I hope so. Wow! I can't wait. Anyway, I looked, you know, and I have tickets to one more game in this plan I'm in. There's one more game. It's a game on September first, which also might be consequential. And guess who it's against? Ooh, this Reds? The St. Louis Cardinals. <gasps> you scored. You, oh. like, won the lottery. Ah! Ah! Do you believe it? Am I smart or what? Did I know how to pick the games or what? Ha! Huh? Ha! Huh? I can't believe it. You yeah. have how many tickets do you have? I have two if you want to come up. I might fly in. <laughs> oh, do. Do. What day is I that? don't know. I'll let you know exactly. Um, I will off air. Oh, that'd be I, so I much speak, fun I, if you I did. Too soon. I don't know. That I, I, know, I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. So Susan, I wish I had a pic. You think I'm going to hold something up? You're not looking, so you can't see this. Well, I, wait, I, I could be looking. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. but it's going to take me a minute. Okay. I want to uh, put up a picture here of a newborn child. Yes. Oh, that huge baby. Yes. I don't have to. Yes, I've seen that. Picture. Okay, let me tell. Let me show my. Okay, wait. All I can say is, you bet that was born by cesarean section. No, no, that no. little girl has the head the size of a. No, wait. I'm looking at a little boy. Is it a little boy? The little girl you're talking about was born in Pennsylvania. Right. This boy I'm looking at is a tiny bit bigger. He, she was 13 pounds, 13.5 or something. No. And this kid that I'm looking at, I think has a few ounces on her, but he was not born by C-section. That huge baby was a vaginal birth. This is in Germany. The largest baby ever born in Germany. In Leipzig. Thirteen and a half pounds. <laughs> Jeez. It just, you know, it just shows you. What? I, that women can what? Do anything? Right. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a call. Hi, hi. I just don't know. What were those ladies uh, eating? It, wait, wait, wait. wait. It, what were those women eating? Hello, caller. Hey there, Lynn and uh, Susan. First soon to be birthday girl, uh, Susan. Uh-huh. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, I got to make a quick run, but I was just wondering if you two were aware that tomorrow night, actually Thursday night at the Pirates game, 
happens to be something that uh, you two are not going to like. Because you brought it up last month with the Cardinals, and now oh, it's coming no! to the Pirates. Oh, don't say it! What is yeah. it? Is Christian it, night. Is it Christian night? Christian night. Okay, everybody yep, else stay Thursday. Home. Susan's the one that's got the bee in her bonnet about this. I don't care. There was a Jewish night last. No, that's fine. I, I, that's fine. I, I, don't, I think that's fine. You know, fly your flag. That's fine. It was just the other thing that bothered me, and, the, and it, that stopped. So. Hey, so wait a minute. So what does that mean? If you're a Christian, you get a reduced ticket? Yeah, you get a discount. Um, I think it's like $9 uh, for the Pirates Baseball Club or at like $15. Usually it's $18 for a grandstand, but it's $15 uh, if you want to take part in this event. But usually the price for Pittsburgh baseball clubs is $52, but for Christian night, it's 43 <laughs> I think, okay, I think it'd be funny to like get a bunch of Jews and, and pay the full price and, and take take all the seats in the Pittsburgh club. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Um, it's on the Pirates website. I think uh Is it that little it. Is it that little restauranty looking place that hangs out over the What is that? Uh You don't know and I don't know. Um it, it it's like the 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 very glitzy area. It's kind of like the uh First Niagara Club and the Captain Morgan Club at Consol Energy Center, but you know, it's like a whole floor of uh club seats. You know, they have like okay. billiard tables and uh you know, restaurants and that oh. sort of thing, and um, so that's basically what the club's all about. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the Pirates game uh, tonight. Games tonight, today, uh, yeah. Oh, the double yeah. header, and uh, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully, there'll be better games. Well, better games, yeah, like not blowouts, right? right. Better games. But okay, and you know what? That's, you're telling me about P- a part of PNC Park I didn't even know existed. I mean, you know, I don't know. Oh. Well, oh, really. Yeah, I don't know. There's all that fancy stuff there. You mean there's actually good restaurants there? Um, it's kind of like uh, you know, upscale restaurants. Re- let's just say restaurants and uh, food stuff you usually don't find At, in the typical uh, okay uh, cr- uh, concourses at Pizza okay. Park. Because the- it's not just hot dogs and peanuts and cracker jacks and all that fun stuff. Okay, because I got to tell you the um, the oh wait he said. Um, I'm just getting something about Christian Knight. <laughs> really? This is, um, yes, Link for Pirates Christian Knight. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, this guy, Robert, wants to know, Susan, what are you going to do now with the notion that the Bucks, the Pirates, are hosting the same event as those Cardinals? Now you got to root for <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm having, I'm actually, you know, quietly sort of rooting for the Pirates. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I would, you know, part of me, here's, I got a root for my Cardinals. Part of me is not upset if you guys win, because I'm, I'm happy that you get to that experience it's fun this. To win, and yes. you, I gotta go you guys have a shot have a great at week. it. What? Happy, I have to go, but, um, have a great, uh, have a great time at the Pirates game. Thank and, you. Uh, Happy birthday, Susan. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay, here it is. Here's the link. Bring your family, friends, and church to Faith Night. They're calling it. Uh, it's Thursday's game. And the uh, the Well, maybe. I like that because we'll get all those Christians in the stands, and maybe they'll be praying for the Cardinals to lose. And all of that prayer is probably going to work, don't you think? Just might. Um, so yeah, you, you get a you get a little bit of a deal. There ain't much of a deal, but you get a little bit of a deal. And the coupon code, if you want to get the deal for that August first game, the you know how they ask, do you have a code? The code is the word faith. Oh, I knew you were going to say it was faith. <laughs> okay. Faith night. Faith night. Well, that's more inclusive. Yeah, but what did they... But no, everybody seemed to think it's Christian night. <laughs> what did that mean? Well, it, it, well, but you see, that's that. But you can have faith and not be Christian. I know, but I think this is Christian night, even though... Because there was a Jewish... 
I'm telling you, there was a Jewish game. And they even had this Jewish guy who heads the uh, Jewish Federation here, Jeff Finkelstein, or Steen. <laughs> we were doing this yesterday. I don't know. Throwing out the first pitch. And I was thinking, oi, oi, I hope, <laughs> oi, can Finkelstein mess? make it? I don't know. I didn't look. <laughs> so there, so maybe there's going to be like a minister that's going to throw out the first uh, pitch on Thursday. I don't know. I won't be there. So enough of this, okay. <laughs> so Susan. Yeah. So in Cannes, that's in France. Yeah, oh, in Cannes, yes. In Cannes. <laughs> it's really Cannes, isn't it? Now, I don't think there's the ES sound <clears throat> in uh, French. <clears throat> but I know that <clears throat> people who seem to know say can. But I agree, there's not an AS sound. I don't know. We know it's not. I mean, is it Francais or Francais? It's Francais. Parlez-vous Francais? <laughs> Where'd you take your French? <laughs> Um, so there, there's the second huge jewelry heist. In I know. <coughs> they just waltzed in and waltzed right out. $136 million worth of, of jewels. And I was reading this little item in, the, in our local paper, and it said this, and I thought this had to be a mis... Uh, this had to be wrong. It said, snatch the jewels from an exhibition at the Ritzy Carlton Hotel. Yeah, that's it. Not the Ritzy Carlton. It is the Carlton Hotel. Right, but when you put Ritzy. Yeah, why would Ritzy, they call it the Ritzy Carlton? Right? No, but it, Ritzy is not capitalized. You know, there is the Ritz Carlton. Right. That's a chain of hotels. Well, sort of but a chain. But this is just the plain old. But, but so to use yeah, ritzy, to use Carlton, as the adjective hotel. ritzy in front of Carlton then makes people like me think, well, was it the Ritz Carlton or was it just a merely a ritzy Carlton? It's the wrong adjective, I think. Upscale anyway, is what they were going ups, for. Upscale. Anyway, this is the exact same hotel that, uh, that uh, uh, Cary Grant... Right, they, they, and they filmed the movie. Grace right. Kelly in the Hitchcock film To Catch a Thief. Right. Where he's a, 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 a well, a jewelry thief. So uh, there you have it. Life imitating art. Um, oh, and good. It makes so much more sense than stealing art. I've never understood. Yeah, I don't get that either. Stealing art. Because what do you do you with it? You are being paid. Buy somebody to, to procure get it for them, and they right. want to keep it locked in a room and just look at it themselves. There is, it, right. or you want to sell it back to the insurance company. I guess that's what you're doing. You're holding it for ransom. But I mean, that story of that woman that burned the stuff to protect her son, or all or part of it, they aren't sure. No, now they're thinking um, that that didn't. Um, she did not burn it. She's saying now that was a lie. Yeah, but they found <laughs> some ashes that uh, she burned some of it. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, this is a big heist of, uh, of you know, real masterpieces from some of the great artists of the world. And uh, this guy uh, who, who took the stuff, his mother uh, knew it. And she then thought she'd be helping him out if she got rid of the evidence. And, and so she said she burned. She just threw all these, what, I mean, like Cezannes and Monet's and who knows what's in a... And the art world is going bonkers that they might be destroyed. But you're right. What, what is the point of stealing a work of art. art when you can't I mean, jewels sell make it. sense because you can, you, you know, if they're you can set, dis, you can unset yeah, them. You can if unset it's a huge stone, you might get right. less value, but you can cut the stone right. again right. And, and put it right back into the, into the market right, and exactly. nobody's the wiser. So I don't, I don't get it either. 
I don't get it. Um, I think we need to take a break. Okay. Okay. Oh, gosh, when I said that, I think we need to take a break. Is that that up talk a little bit? Kind of. Kind of. Well, I can't that quite combined do it. with a little uh, Swedish and yeah. uh, mostly, actually, what you said is, I think we need to take a break. Okay. But anyway, that up talk? Yeah. That thing? Yeah. Um, I read something very disquieting about yeah. it. Yeah. It said that so many people are doing it of a certain age that it will cease to sound wrong and that people in positions of power will talk <gasps> this way in maybe 20 years. But right now... It is not considered a good thing for So a, there's still time. Stamp it out now. Cut it out. Well, I know where I read this. In the business section or something, some woman who is a writer for, like, the New York Times or something talks this way. She knows she does. And she was, she was on some show, and it just was, the show was inundated with negative comments about get that woman off i can't listen to her who is she's like an idiot i mean she sounds like a little girl and she has a very high pitch voice and she talks like this and she's very educated and you know and she is sort of adamant that this is the way i talk i like the sound of my voice and and uh, and, and she wrote this column that said that Right now, that kind of a voice is a detriment to, you know, upward movement uh, in the professional realm, but probably will not be so in another generation because it'll be so, there'll be so many people doing it. That's so upsetting. It is. It is upsetting. But, you know, I mean, that she's, she's right about how language patterns start and get established, and it's the same way that words, you know, new words become part of the lexicon and end up in a dictionary. Well, who thought that that was a good idea? with mass usage, but I, you know, I still think that a large number of people will tell their children to cut it out. Do any of, did your daughter ever talk that way? Only, only when making fun of people that talk that way. Okay, but a lot of people talk that way. A lot of people. And I can't stand well, I, it. I'm so conscious of, of making sure that I don't do it that I'm afraid to do it when appropriate, which is at the end of a sentence. Well, what it is, it, 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 I mean, it makes, it makes the listener have to keep nodding because it's constantly, because of that upturn at the end, it's that constantly to, seeking you're, validation. It's, it's reaching out and engaging, right? No, it's trying to ask, so isn't that right? I'm going there. It's sort of like uh, unsure. It, it sounds so uncertain. Chuck writes about the Pirates, and then we have to take a break. Uh, about the Pirates, I would argue that every game that the Pirates have played since 1992 has been consequential. Okay? That is an argument, yes, of course, that could be made. Um, as for Susan, if Susan flies in for that Pirate game in September, perhaps... Would, could we see her live in the studio wearing her Cardinal jersey? I bet she doesn't Susan have would have to buy one. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say, she doesn't seem like the jersey type. Like, I don't have a pirate jersey. But, yeah, if she were to come in, sure, she'd be on the show. Uh, and as to Christian Knight, Chuck writes, Christian Knight and Jewish Knight pale in comparison to Bring Your Dog Knight. Oh, yeah. Yes. I think they have more than one Bring Your Dog Night. Mm -hmm. They do. What a mess that must be. <laughs> no, they, I think it's a special section, right, isn't it? You can't just bring your dog anywhere. But the, the, a lot of people show up with their dogs. And by all accounts, Susan, the dogs have a good time. I bet. I bet they do, too. Okie doke. We got to take a break. And we'll be right back. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. This week, great deals on vet services from Bellacoop. BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BergBargains.com. 
Packers. Vikings. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we make a real difference in the building blocks of life. Children succeed in school. Families gain financial stability. The health of our neighbors improves, and suddenly so do our communities. Real change won't happen without you. Live Live United. United. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. More of that. Okay, Susan. Yes? I just want to note that uh, the passing of a former governor of um, uh, this state, Pennsylvania, who is indicative of the kind of Republican that no longer exists. He's sort of like, you know, in your state, the Danforths. And in our state, uh, there was a a guy named Scranton, William Scranton. Yeah. And he uh, died. I I was surprised he was still alive, frankly. I I guess I thought he'd be dead. He was 96. Anyway, he was, so he was governor, like, around the same time uh, JFK was president. So this is the early 60s. And listen to what, listen, this is a Republican governor. Listen to what he did, some of what he did. He voted, um, he, he oh, when he was in Congress, he completely voted with uh, the Democrats on urban renewal projects, on the Peace Corps, and on the minimum wage. And then when he became governor, he raised sales and liquor taxes. He built the community college system so that poor uh, people living in Pennsylvania could get a college degree. He increased state government spending, almost doubling it. Uh, And he he did a lot of things that helped blue-collar people get better jobs, get more money. When he ceased to be the governor, he was appointed by Nixon after Kent State to, um, to, for a commission, to head a commission that was the commission to chair, well, listen to the name of this commission, I think, Commission on Campus Unrest. (coughs) And he issued uh, the report to the White House and the White House was in furious with his report because his report about campus unrest was that the the problem at Kent State was not the students. The problem was the National Guard and that the shooting was totally unjustified. These are Yeah. Yeah. That's how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. What right, right. right. Spiro Agnew had a fit. He called it, what a pablum, pablum for permissiveness. Apparently he could never talk in anything other than alliteration, Spiro Agnew. Um, but he... What was that one, the, the, the one with all nattering, the... Nattering, and nattering nabobs of negativity. That's right. Jesus Christ. Anyway, excuse me. Anyway, um, he expanded nursing and hospital care for the needy and for seniors. This is a Republican! And he so hated Barry Goldwater when Goldwater rose that he challenged him at the Republican convention and, of course, got killed in 64. I mean, he just was decimated because that started the Republican Party started like heading off into the into the wilderness. Um, but he was most enraged because Goldwater had voted against the Civil Rights Act. Remember when there were Republicans like that? Right, right. And when the way the way business was routinely done in both houses of Congress was in a bipartisan Partisan way. way. Oh gosh. That wasn't so long ago, guys. Look at what happened to that party. Uh, 
Ray writes, having been a season ticket holder for years, I would argue that I've attended hundreds of faith nights. Well, that's true. I mean, I understand your point. <laughs> <laughs> we would go to those games year after year after year after year, you know, and pray the whole time. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I've been a season ticket holder for a gazillion years, and I've never, you know, right. I never expected them to win anything. Um, anyway, Ray says he was there last night, and he's going to the doubleheader today. And he says he just might reach a saturation point sometime later this week. <laughs> Man. No, these, you won't, because these games, every single one of them is simply going to be fun. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Pittsburgh's going nuts. This is so great. Okay, so speaking of Jesus, who I believe I mentioned just a moment ago in a way that might have been, I guess, considered blasphemy. Um, did you ever see that interview that's gotten all this attention that was on Fox News um, as an interview of a guy who wrote a book a biography of Jesus, and it's called Zealot. And this author was appearing on Fox News, being interviewed by, a, uh, I guess, their religion kind of expert, Lauren Green, who asked him this. And this is why this thing has gone viral, because she says to the guy, his name is Reza Aslan, she says in the interview, you're a Muslim. So why did you write a book about the founder of Christianity? And here was his response. First of all, his eyebrows lifted up in surprise at the question, and then he responded, Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament, and fluency in biblical Greek. I have been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades, and I also happen to be a Muslim. This idea, you know, this is thought that what? What, where are there, you know, they really just don't get it. What is with them? Anyway, this is the greatest thing that ever happened to this guy because the video has been, you know, viewed millions and millions of times. Sales of his book have increased 35%. Uh, and he's, uh, he said, I couldn't have asked for better. So we, here was Fox asking this guy on and attempting to take him down as a, a Muslim, how dare you, writing about Jesus, how dare you. And they've helped him become a, you know, he's all over the place. He's on every show known to man, and people are reading his book and finding it scholarly. Right. Duh. He wrote an actual book about what he said it was about. You know, when I think of how many Christians have written books about what? Judaism? Or Jews who've written about Christianity? Muslims who've written... These are scholars. What difference does it make what their religion is? Idiots. Idiots! Let's see. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, your good humor. Well, I mean, come on. Nincom poops. So, what'd you think well, of the? Well, they are What'd you think of? Uh, what'd you think of the um, uh, b -b 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 Pope saying, "Who am I to judge"? Well, I think it's a step forward, but I I feel just like many other people feel um, that it 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 represents nothing but a uh, it it's not it's not changing any church policies. It's just saying he's not judging. It, it, it doesn't change the policy that they don't deplore the homosexual. They deplore the the sin of acting on it. Right. So well, it, in that sense, yes, does it 
seem hopeful, sure, but does it seem no, it doesn't like change. a change in policy? No. no. It doesn't change doctrine, but it changes the tone, doesn't it? It does change the tone. I mean, you know, same thing as what he said about oh, women, women, that, you right. know, they hold an exalted place in the church you know, above but, bishops and, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm going, uh, yeah, except that that's not how you act on it. No, no. So, you know, I mean, as a, a woman, you know, looking at the policies of the church towards, uh, towards, towards sisters religious, you know, women religious. You know, you don't even have to get beyond that. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, this is one of those things where I think I, I welcome the change in tone. I, I would welcome even more a change in policy and action. Right. But this guy seems clearly to be... A different kind of a pope, you bet. And there is a humanity to him that you sure as hell didn't see in Benedict. No. You don't get the sense that he's really just pleased down to his little red boots with his little red shoes. He doesn't even wear red shoes, Susan. He doesn't wear red shoes. Well, that's what I mean. It's not the most important thing about the job, and you began to sense that sometimes it was with these other guys. I know. No, this guy, it truly is, uh, you can tell, I mean, he's not faking uh, humility. No. No. And and I, that, that there's or something... Or his lack of... of, of um, Appetite for, you know, for things. For, Ostentation and, mil- you know, he, yeah. Right. So. For, for the trappings of power. Right. I think he's very interested in seeing what he can get, what he can get his power to do. Right. Well, I wish him well. He seems Yeah, better. I wish him well, too. Um, oh, the, uh, somebody from the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh... Melanie, has emailed and said that uh, Reza Aslan, the guy who wrote The Muslim, who had the gall to write write about Jesus, that he's coming here to Pittsburgh. The World Affairs Council is, in fact, bringing him in uh, in September to speak. And she said, you might enjoy coming. I think I definitely would. Well, you know, I, I remember going to you know, a lecture at St. Norbert's. Um, which is a Catholic school in, near Green Bay. Right, which, which, and I can't remember what the name of the, I, it was something like, we all should, we need to talk about Allah. And it wasn't by a Muslim, it was about, it was, it was about a Christian discussing how Christianity, you know, comparing texts, comparing how uh, people from inside the faith and outside the faith would look at the, actually it was comparing passages in, you know, in, in, the, in the Torah, in to the, the New Quran Testament, and the, and, in, you know, uh-huh. in, uh, in the Quran, and, and, and how different people would interpret them in different ways. And it was it was such an interesting... I bet. You know, look at the... At the at the linguistics and the attitudinal linguistics. Mm-hmm. But that was part of what that, that lecture was dealing with, this attitude of how dare you read my text or interpret my text. Well, you better hope that other people look at your text. Exactly. Oh, see, that's ecumenicism, isn't it? Well, it's just part of the way we are today. That's part of you know, only playing for one's own little, tight little tribe, and whether it's political or religious, or it's just not... Not good. This, this contraction into oneself is just really, you know, exaggerated and scary. Well, I mean, I'm not sure the term totally applies, but I remember this term, learning it in college, balkanization. And, yeah, this sense that, like, you know, people just want to get into their, it's like Yugoslavia, right? As soon as that, as soon as Tito was gone, you could see immediately balkanization (laughs) reassert itself and people just go to their, 
their corners, their their tribes. And yeah, we've this is obviously um I think a real strong part of human nature to do that. So I, I think always fighting well, an uphill it, it, battle. There was a study on I, one of those shows on Sunday about uh, about this in babies, about how it seems that instead of babies being taught to hate, it's sort of innate, in that if you give them a selection of toys, they will always go against the toys that they that don't seem to look like them and go towards one that looks like the people they them. know. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, the studies well, talked about how the hate was innate, and I just think it's the survival instinct to look for something that seems to be like you. Right, right. This, this, the, these people are going to be okay. Those people I don't know about. Right. I and mean, so I understand that why that's a I, just, right. I, I remember thinking at the time, well, why don't they go for the positive explanation as opposed to the harder yeah. to prove negative explanation? Right. And, and you know, that... <sighs> It would seem, though, that we have, you know, faculties that have, um, you know, that are, what's, what am I trying to say? Well, no, but we, we, it, I mean, it might the, show that, that, in fact, you do need to take positive steps to broaden one's natural instinct of what is like you. Right. Well, a lot of people really, I mean, it's clear. I mean, even now, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, oh, I'll be killed. Although you would, by the way some people act, you know, it, running. It would be hard pressed to prove it. Running off to live in gated communities with a bunch of other people just like Shooting them. anybody that stands and, on right, their ground, and, exactly. that stands on their land. As, yeah, yeah, exactly. And feeling threatened. By those who are not, I mean, that's just a, it, it's amazing how uh, a person's, you know, rational self does not kick in. And may, so this is, it, it might be very innate. And it, it's, although some people seem to rise above it, I wish more would. I have to take a break. Okay. Okay. We will be right back. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person, and if you're a book person to read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition, join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for information on the Summer Beer Fest at Stage AE. Plus, Sugar Ray, Jam on Walnut, Smash Mouth, Summer Safari, Tribal Seeds, Gin Blossoms, and Oleander. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout Western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone with GPS-enabled listings at citypapermobile.com. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. All righty, we are back. So um, here's a bit of uh, news, and I think more should be being made of it. Uh, we know that the Republicans uh, in the Congress are hell-bent on trying to destroy uh, the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, Uh and attempt to defund it, this, that, the other thing. I, I, Susan, there was a great piece written by a rock-ribbed conservative, Norm Ornstein, um, who was just ripping into the Republicans for what they're trying to do with, uh, with health care. Right. I mean, he basically said, you know, get over it. Obama's president. Yeah. 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 We lost that one. Don't, this is not the way to fight it. it it's just not the right thing to do. It's, it, you know, he is honorable. There's like, uh, there are still some honorable people in it. Well, I, fewer and fewer. I, I don't know where they're all hiding, but I'm sure that. Well, Fewer and fewer. So anyway, here, here, here's, uh, here's some information that maybe hasn't been getting um, a lot of attention. Um, New York uh, 
state, right? They uh, f- they they are coming out with their these insurance exchanges for people who do not have health insurance. That's part of the act that's going to be kicking in. And in New York State, the premiums that people will have to pay on these exchanges are coming in way, way 50% lower than 50% than anybody thought. The Congressional Budget Office, so all of the all of the projections and about And it's not an anomaly. I can't remember which state, but I think another Maryland. Midwestern no, state uh, Maryland. got theirs up and going and the same things happening. Maryland uh, Maryland's insurance commissioner uh, said that he expected new rates will um, be up to 33% lower than expected. Coverage for a 21-year-old non-smoker could cost um, about $93 a month. And then depending on your income status, you know, um, uh, um, uh, you, you'll you be getting rebates from the federal government to offset mm-hmm. those costs. So that's, that's like the full price cost. Rates for New York and California, which obviously are two of the most populous states, uh, have also come in lower than expected. And then this uh, was reported in USA Today. Today. Uh, Personal health care costs rose in the last 12 months at the slowest rate in the last 50 years, 50 years, spending on hospital Spending on nursing home services all declined. Um, In May, a report by the Congressional Budget Office showed a $618 billion drop in projected Medicare and Medicaid spending over the next decade. I, and I, I, I'm just beginning on some of this good news. It's just incredible. Uh, we have a call. Hello, caller. Hi, guys. Sorry. Um, well, and yet you will hear that that Obamacare is a failure. Pardon me? You You're right. We will hear that Obamacare is a failure. That's because that's what they're that's what they'll put out there. No, well, and that's and that is exactly that ties into the previous conversation you guys were having, which was about um, living in gated people being in fear. I there. Maybe there is a pro, pro, proclivity to being um, scared of something that is different. Yeah, yeah. But I think a large part of that is, well, I hate to say, I hate to put put blame on it, but I would say it's the right that has done that. Because I, I, I truly believe that it, is a, that it is a narrative that they have created that Along with government is bad. If society scares you, it's a failure of government. Mm-hmm. Well, that was Ronnie Reagan. That was Ronnie Reagan. He st- he really, really made that a very respectable idea. Well, and 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 the more more and more I hear people saying, "What is going on? Things are crazy. Look what's happening." You know, <laughs> this and that and the other thing. Meanwhile, crime rates, violent crime rates are down. Property crime rates are down. They've been going down since the seventies. Yeah, and yet the fear the is up. The world. If you were to ask, and it's and it's right. usually people on the right. If you were to ask them, it is the end of the world. Yeah. Society is falling apart. It's disintegrating. Isn't that something? You know, the, the thing I would say to you guys is when you talk about people isolating themselves and everything, I wouldn't be so sure about that. I mean, that's that's older people in suburbia. In the cities, there are more and more um, individual groups or individuals that are from different backgrounds melding together. I mean, the, it's it's incredible the groups of kids you see and their interests that you see, and and you know, so it's I think it's, it's, it's getting more better. Of an urban <laughs> versus rural, unfortunately. Like well, well groups, I do. But. I think it's. I think you're right about it being generational. As long as there's an opportunity. For diversity, the, the, our children are far less um, less racist than their parents were. Well, yeah. sure. And I mean, even as bad as things are, still with 
you know, trying to block voting rights and, and stepping on the rights of, of whatever the minority, for whatever, you know, reason you might be a minority, sexual orientation, color, whatever, it's still better than it was 10 years ago, 20 true, years ago, true, 30 true, years ago. True. And we're still making that slow progression, but I really think when you hear people screaming about how bad things are, I think a lot of that has to do with the right, well, the narrative that the right is building that is wants to establish the idea that our society is a failure and, and it's because the government is failing. So, okay, guys. Sorry. Well done. No, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't... I think he's absolutely right. Yeah. That's, that's been, that's been yeah. the, the way the Republicans have gone about it now for several years. And uh, you, I accept <laughs> on the national level, it has them driving their own truck off the cliff, but... Uh, you, I don't know what we're going to do about these gerrymandered local levels. No, I don't either. That's a problem, a big problem. So um, they also, you know, this idea that um, Obamacare would have an impact on companies who wouldn't hire employees because then they'd have to... It also says... There is no indication that the law is affecting job growth. In fact, job growth in industries that have traditionally not provided health insurance for their employees, such as restaurants, has been higher. Restaurant sales and employment have increased. Um, data from across the economy covering consumers, government, and private employers point to the same conclusion. Health care cost growth has slowed. Um, part of it, they say, is about the incentives built into the law, uh, that uh, hospitals are being penalized for not uh, providing, I guess, uh, efficient health care. Um, there are ways that they end up getting less money. Um, there's the law. I guess uh, fosters coordinated care and preventable preventive care, um, all this kind of stuff. But of course, it's not more of the Bellin Hospital model. You know, more on the spot. Get it, get yeah. everybody. You know, keep keep everybody well, and then you need less care. So yeah, if you shift the emphasis, you end up having a healthier population. And the more that we can make it across the board, and the and the more people that are insured, the cheaper it is. It just is, because you don't have these artificially inflated cover where the insured is covering the uninsured, That's right. whether, whether That's we right. want to or not. Susan that is, money uh, yeah. came from someplace. Okay. Susan is referencing when she said Belland, that that is a hospital in our hometown of Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin, which we're proud of, but uh, also has been singled out uh, nationally as... I believe even the, the subject of a New York, New York Times, Times editorial, editorial called something like how they're doing it right. Yeah. And this is a hospital that is. It's, 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 it's not operating like a UPMC here. Not at all. It has a whole different paradigm. Costs there are down and health care results are up. It's also rated, yeah, on every on every level that they that they test hospitals. It's rated in the you know top ten percent of hospitals top. across the country. I and was, it, we were know, born I mean, there. It's, it's it just it can be done. <laughs> yeah, it, it can, can be. be done, but it's it's this you know this sort of amazing idea that what you want to do is make the most care available to the most people as fast as you can, because in the end that keeps all costs lower. Absolutely. So, um, everything is coming in looking good on the health care front, and then you look at what the House Republicans are doing, and they've got one thing in their mind, and that's it, and that is to scuttle this somehow. Well, you know, there, I don't know if you noticed, uh, but there is, a, there is a provision that's causing Congress a lot of trouble in this health care yes, law. Yes, I did and see that. that. They and their staffs have to seek their coverage on the exchanges. On the, in these pools. Right. And um, there's actually no provision for the federal government to reimburse them. So suddenly, Congress has been set afloat on the same seas that the rest of us have been sailing it. for a very 
very long time. Oh, but they're and screaming bloody murder. Walking. Yeah. But they, I still don't think they get the point that what is, has happened to them is a dose of reality. Right. No, they, Guess what? I, you know, my husband and I have purchased our own health insurance on the open market, you know, because we, are, we, we aren't hired by a large corporation. No. And guess what? It's expensive. terribly expensive. Yeah. And I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that they can't drop us, you know, should we get ill. I'm thrilled there are no more lifetime caps. I'm thrilled that there aren't any more provisions that if we choose to switch insurance, we can do so even if one of us has a pre-existing condition. Plenty of and I'm pe- even more thrilled that my nephew can come home from China with diabetes and, and where he's had to live for three years as an artist because here he can't get insurance. He moved to China to get insurance? You what? Betcha. Well, he didn't I move mean, to he had China. I mean, he has a good job. He's an artist, and he's employed there, you know, teaching Chinese people about porcelain. So you could, he's a very, very, very good artist. But and he would like to come home, and what keeps him from, from coming home is the fact that he is a, you know, a, has had diabetes, juvenile type 1 diabetes since he was a kid, and he, he is virtually impossible to insure on the open market, or was until Obama. Well, but not, came yeah, about. but now he can. Get, now he yeah, can. Now he can. Wow. Okay. So if people don't think that decisions are made based on, you know, on on where they can stay alive in an affordable way, it, that shouldn't be an issue in this country. And shame on us that it has been. Yeah. Uh, Ray writes again about the Muslim writing about um, Jesus. Thomas Merton, who was Catholic, Thomas Merton wrote a dozen books on Buddhism over his life. He and several Western writers helped bring Buddhism out of the Eastern shadows. And then he goes on to say, to talk about somebody I have not a clue and he says, we now have Thich Nhat Han. That's a name. Asian. I don't know yeah. what. Writing about Christ and Buddha. Opening eyes in a way that would never have opened if we didn't have Merton's introduction. Uh, the Christian right hears Muslim and equates it with enemy. Yeah. And where did yeah, they... it's just a knee-jerk response. Right. And, and honestly, they think we're nuts that we don't. That's right. They think we're nuts. They think we're crazy and that we don't protect ourselves or our own and we would let... Isn't that amazing? And there was a piece in the paper today about... Um, it is provable that if you want to live in the safest environment, the safest environment is a large city. <laughs> the least safe environment to live, rural. Well, sure. You got no one looking out for you. You also have more just sort of accidents because of rural stuff. I mean, you. Just, I mean, just. But whatever. The, You're, if you, you are look, absolutely more apt to die of a tractor rolling over on you on a, in a rural area. You're absolutely right. That's what I meant. Right. We have a call. Hello. Hello, Lynn. Yes. Just a couple things. I'm really enjoying your conversation today. Thank you. Uh, first off, on the pronunciation of con, it's can, but that's only if you live in North for sales. <laughs> okay. okay. And, and regarding the Muslim <laughs> author who... I heard this guy on the radio, and uh, he's really impressive. This guy's knowledge is unreal. But he also was a Christian. He was a Muslim, converted to Christianity, and then went back to being a Muslim. Oh, that's his biggest crime then. So, yeah, <laughs> but this guy's background, I mean, his educational background and stuff, and that's what it's all about. He He's written scholarly works. He's, it's not necessarily critique from what I get no religion, but uh, no uh, actually my wife I think is, is going to be ordering the book she's uh, interested in she read a, a brief article about it wow but, uh, 
Well, I'm I'm thinking maybe I'll I'll try to uh, listen when he comes to speak at the uh, at the World Affairs Council here in September. It's, yeah, yeah, it, and, it, and and this this is not somebody that you're going to easily argue with. <laughs> well, the guy is extraordinarily bright. Well, as he said, he has four degrees yeah. in 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 all of this. But all all the guys at Fox can see is he's a Muslim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Well, it's Fox. I mean. It's Fox. Other than, a, other than the Simpsons, who pays attention to Fox? <laughs> In, well, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of people, but hey, thanks, thanks for I, the call. I'm related to some. Uh, yeah, we all are. Thank you for your call. <laughs> God, we all are. Yeah, we sure are. All right. Well, we even sh- love them. Yeah, in an abstract kind of way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we're kidding. No, we're not. I don't know what. Ah, uh, Suze, yeah. that's it. We're done. We are. We're, we're late. We're overdone. Yeah. So thanks so much. You're welcome. And uh, let's uh, hope for some. Go Cardinals. Go Pirates. Go. I, let's have I'm good not baseball. When I say I'll be happy either way. Okay, I think we're gonna get smashed today. But well, what maybe. The hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. 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 Goodbye. Potter tomorrow. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.